So guys, moving on, moving on to uh, chapter two. So chapter two is thinking like an economist. Um, not that complicated chapter. You know, we will learn new concepts that we need to actually know in order to continue with the material in chapter three. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, the kind of... Um, uh, definition-wise, theory-wise, um, you know, concepts, what kind of roles economies, economists play in our society. We're going to introduce different models. We're going to talk about circle of flow diagram. Um, we're going to talk about what is the difference between positive and normative statement. Um, and the main thing, probably what we're going to do, actually, we're going to build production possibilities frontier and learn, you know, um, everything that goes with that. So economists, they play two roles in our society. Economists, they are working as a scientist, um, a scientist and um, economists also work as a policy advisor. When economists work as a scientist, they're trying to explain the world. Um, so, for example, uh, when economists working as a scientist, they go in to tell that, you know what, uh, printing too much money actually causing inflation. So the economists, they studied the inflation, they, um, you know, found the cause of the inflation. So they're scientists, okay, they did all the research possible and they said that printing too much money causing inflation. This is when the economists working as a scientist, they're trying to explain the world. When economists are working as a policy advisors, they're going to try to improve the world. And what are they going to do? They're going to say, well, you know what? We need to actually print less money, okay, in order to decrease a level of inflation. So therefore, once again, when they advise us what to do in order to improve the economy, then in this situation, economists are working as a policy advisor. Advisors. So, guys, it's a very kind of technical definitions. I don't think that you ever going to uh, watch TV and see some kind of economist, you know, making some kind of statements or uh, telling you what happened and stuff like that. And you're going to think, oh, is that economist was working as a scientist or as a policy advisor? So, but please just know this definition, um, you know, for the test. Keep going. Um, when we actually uh, study economics, we make a lot of assumptions. Okay, so and assumptions they make in our world very very simple okay and it makes our models when we look at the models it makes it very easy to analyze for example um, one of the assumptions that we're going to do in this chapter when we're going to study um, production possibilities frontier is that we're going to assume that economy is actually producing only two goods or if we're going to talk about international trade we're going to assume that um, we only have two countries in the world and they're producing only two goods. So once again, it's very unrealistic, but it's easier for us to analyze model in this way when we simplify it and when we make assumptions in these models. And then when we actually make conclusions out of this simplified model, we can take these conclusions and apply it to a real world. So therefore, once again, remember for the test that, you know, we um, uh, make a lot of assumptions when we um, you know build our models and once again they make our you know kind of world or our models um, you know easier to analyze um, so some of the example of different um, kind of models then that we use in different I guess um, um, science science or um, different uh, subjects is going to be I guess this human in biology that's probably in some kind of medicine biology um, or dentistry and we have a roadmap uh, that customers use in order so what else do we need to know before we get to the circular flow diagram? What, what, what else do we need to keep in mind? So households in our economy, they're going to own the factors of productions. And once again, these factors of productions are going to be labor, um, labor, land, and capital. So pretty much households, they own labor, land, and capital in our economy. And what are they going to do? They're going to take this labor, land, and capital, and they're going to sell or rent it out to companies. Okay, companies, what are they going to do? They're going to pay money for this labor, land, and capital to our households. Okay, so then companies, what are they going to do? They're going to take this labor, land, and capital, and they actually going to produce goods, okay, with this labor, land, and capital. 
So once again, over here, firms, they kind of buy and hire this labor lending capital. And what are they going to do? They're going to use it to produce goods and services in our, in our economy. When they produce these goods and services in our economy, then firms are going to sell these goods and services to whom? to households, isn't it? So therefore, households, what are they going to buy? They're going to buy these goods and services that companies actually produced, okay, by using this labor land and capital that households actually own, you know, sometime in the past. Okay. Let's get to our circle of flow diagram and we're going to see, you know, how everything works here. So here you go. We have firms, we have households, we have two markets, markets for goods and services and markets for, for um, factors of production. And we have these two lines over here. We have a green line and we have a red line. So red line are going to represent the flow of our factors of production in the economy and the green line is going to show the flow of our income of our money so green kind of money dollars are green so when this green line is going to show the circulation uh, circulation of money in our economy so let's start with the red, red line okay so we're going to start here from households so remember we said that households in our economy okay they own labor lending capital they're going to take this labor lending capital and on this market market for factors of production they're going to sell it to firms what are firms are going to do okay when they purchasing land when they purchasing some kind of capital what do they do with that they actually produce goods and services isn't it remember to produce goods and services what do they need to do they also need to hire us okay so how are the households are actually selling labor so the households they are hired by our firms and companies okay and firms and companies they actually using us as workers to produce those goods and services isn't it so therefore once again all these three things are going to flow to our companies so when companies produce goods and services what are they going to do with them they're not going to just keep it in their warehouse they're going to go to this market and from on the market for goods and services they're going to sell these goods and services once again who is going to buy these goods and services from the companies well remember we have just two participants over here isn't it of course these goods and services are going to be sold back to our households and the circle is actually going to repeat okay households they're going to sell sell these uh, factors of production firms are going to to buy rent or hire them and then produce goods and services you know and it's actually you know repeat on its own again okay so now keep moving okay we're going to talk about this uh this green line so remember remember um uh, let's suppose we're going to start here again from households so households when they work for the companies remember companies hire us isn't it so when household work for the companies they generated some kind of income isn't it what are they going to do with this income they're going to go and spend this on the market for goods and services by doing what by purchasing those goods and services that company produced isn't it now when households spend the money okay on this market companies generate okay our spending money they generate in the form of the revenue and it's actually going to firms what are firms going to do with this money here you go they sold these goods and services what are firms going to do the, with this money are they going just to put it in the register and put it in the bank account and do nothing with that and the end says no they're going to take this money and they're going to actually hire people isn't it here you go they hire this labor what are they going to do with this money they're actually going to take this money and they're going to reinvest isn't it they're going to actually purchase some capital they're going to purchase a building they're going to pay rent and stuff like that so therefore when company take this money okay that they actually just receive from the household they're going to pay rent they're going to buy buildings they're going to hire people and therefore when companies spend in this money this money goes back to the households in the form of income okay in the form of income and circle is going to repeat again we're going to take this money we households because we work for the company we sold them land we sold them some kind of capital we're going to take this money we're going, going to go to this market okay purchase goods and services from our companies this money is going to go in the form of the revenue and once again it's going to keep going so therefore what do we learn from this diagram we learned this that firms and households they actually depend on each other isn't it if firms are not hiring our households if they're not purchasing labor lending capital from us 
what is what is going to happen then it means that firms do not actually pay any money to households if they don't pay any money to our households households are not going to take this money and spend on this market for goods and services if they're not spending on this market for goods and services by purchasing goods and services it means that the companies are not going to generate any revenue you know and the circle is going to repeat so therefore guys remember we do depend on each other okay um and um what else so we do depend on each other and once again it's very important that the government is going to make sure they they create in favorable conditions for companies to operate the business isn't it because if they operate a business once again they actually create income for our households okay and then households take this income and they spend it where by purchasing goods and services from the firms okay really quick what is not realistic on these on this diagram what is actually kind of um, omitted from this diagram so if you can think about for a couple of seconds remember when the firm when the firm actually receive you know money in the form of the revenue from households are firms keeping all the money and the answer is no remember firm actually or firms have to pay taxes to the government isn't Indeed. so therefore not all money that firms generated is going to go back actually to our household some of that money is going to go to the government in the form of taxes isn't it so therefore government is emitted um, from this you know circular flow diagram taxes um you know not taken into consideration and then remember when households when they go to receive you know uh, their paychecks and stuff from the companies are they going to take all the money that they receive and spend all of this money on the market for goods and services and the answer is no some of the money is actually going to go outside of the country somebody is going to travel to a different country and spend money somewhere else so therefore not all the money are going to return on exactly this market so but once again what do we need to remember that the circle of flow diagram helping us to understand how our economy is actually functions we do depend on each other isn't it firms and households we do depend on, on each other because once again the money and the factors of production circulated from households to firms and from firms back to households